It is said that India got its first traffic lights at Chennai's Egmore Junction in 1953. Chennai is now India's sixth most populous city. It has some 4 million vehicles on 1,800 kilometers of road, which makes its vehicle density the highest in the country. This means that for each kilometer of a Chennai road, there are about 2,000 vehicles. Of these, three to 4,000 vehicles on average go through the tidal park intersection at the start of Chennai's IT corridor every hour. 60% of these are two-wheelers, 30% are cars, and the remaining are autos, buses, bicycles, and so on. Many people complain about the traffic chaos here, but in fact this intersection and others like it are spaces of regulation, where people and technologies are meeting and colliding and interacting and problem solving in so many seen and unseen ways. Consider what's happening at an intersection. We're pausing some flows to ensure other flows, usually with the aid of a traffic light. We're operating vehicles. We're searching for information, possibly on our phones. We're broadcasting information, very likely with our phones. We're looking for cues from other humans who may be operating other vehicles. We're seeking permissions. Sometimes we're using our vehicles to assert ourselves or to express our impatience. Technical infrastructure is being maintained all around us. Data about us is being gathered the intersection becomes a catchment point. Data about vehicular emissions or particulate matter in the air which affects us is being gathered by sensors. Information is flowing as traffic is. We're watching. We're being watched. Navigation is an inherently social act. We rely on a system of implicit or explicit shared meanings to read signs and proceed through a space maybe comfortably, maybe with a sense of risk. It is no coincidence that traffic lights were once called semaphores or sign bearers. But signs of what? Are those the signs we're really reading? And how then are we responding? We put technologies in place somewhere on the faith that they will take care of things for us far more seamlessly and more efficiently than we can. But we're learning that rule-based processes are often insufficient for real-time decision-making and that intelligence has to be localized and behavior-based. So we see that there is a traffic cop not standing in the middle of the intersection but controlling the box which controls the lights. Why? Because the systems in place are mechanical. They don't adapt to rapidly changing conditions at the intersection itself. So the cop steps in and becomes that critical, intelligent, computational link that ensures the existing technology functions efficiently. Or maybe that it functions at all. Trains arrive at the nearby station. Pedestrians flow out. At the Madhya Kailash junction on the one side or Tiruvanmur on the other, there are other lights regulated according to their own needs. There is no interoperability between the train signaling and the intersection signaling. There is no interoperability between one intersection signaling and another intersection signaling. So the cop steps in. He's on his wireless. He's the one who's networked. So he creates that crucial systemic link. Not just the traffic cop, a lot of our behaviors at intersections are responses to local realities which we understand intimately. The fact that this space is rule-bound and that it has its own norms. The fact that violations at intersections are many. The fact that people start jumping off buses at lights even if the bus hasn't reached its stop. The fact that we don't like to diverge from our normal routes. The fact that some human allowances can just save people lots of waiting time or long detours. So what seems like dysfunction from one perspective often is actually allowing functionality at another level. And then it's an expression of mutual forbearance, cooperation, understanding or even grudging allowance. 
Those were probably the sorts of road rules that existed prior to traffic light regulation, which never went away. That layer of human socialities now counterbalances the carrot and stick model of good civic behavior that the traffic light represents. So when Indians complain, as they often do, about the absence of civic sense, they're really just complaining that we don't have one regulatory system like the traffic light to rule them all. And who knows, maybe we never will. Traffic intersections are often focal points for urban street design, aesthetic planning, forecasting, environmental data gathering, and smart city development. Although it feels like we're far away in a place like Chennai from autonomous driving or even intelligent traffic management systems, it is clear there are already multiple autonomies expressed on the roads. What new forms will these take as new technologies and regulatory systems emerge? We'll just have to wait and see.